right, so it's official. Today will be a bad hair day. That's, uh, that's where we are. Um, but uh, I'm glad, uh, glad we're able to move this indoors uh, to accommodate uh, uh, everybody. Um, and we're here to uh, announce uh, an important grant from the U.S. Economic Development Administration, and we're uh, happy today uh, to uh, be joined by the Acting uh, Assistant Secretary of Commerce for Economic Development, Matt Erskine, who has uh, been a huge supporter of what we're trying to do uh, here in the Port of New Bedford and the City of New Bedford generally. Um, and the, the grant today has to do with uh, activating our most important economic asset, uh, the region's most important economic uh, asset, and that is our port. Uh, uh, New Bedford exists in the first place because of the Deepwater Port where we're standing right now, and its success in the future will depend uh, on that port. Uh, and you know, we go back to uh, the whaling days when uh, whalers from uh, Nantucket, which was the thriving port at the turn of the 19th century, decided to come over here because they knew this was a better place to do business. And from that decision sprang uh, really America's first global city and a city that became the wealthiest per capita uh, uh, in, the, in the entire United States as a result of uh, that investment. Uh, we're the, we are proud to say that we have the number one commercial fishing port in, in America today. Um, America's toughest business, we're number one, we are tops in the U.S. Uh, but there's, uh, there's much ahead for us in the future if we plan right. Um, I firmly believe, I firmly believe that if we manage uh, our port well, if we uh, invest, we the city, the state, the federal government invest well in infrastructure here, that New Bedford can be competitive in every industry it has in the harbor. Uh, commercial fishing uh, first and foremost, uh, but offshore wind, uh, cargo, recreation, crews, other, uh, and other industries. It's all here. Uh, we don't need to narrow uh, our focus. We don't need to put our eggs in one basket. The strategy, as we've called it uh, here, uh, from the start is all of the above. And, uh, and to succeed in all these areas, we've got we've to uh, get our ducks in the row. And that's what this, uh, that's just, that's what this planning grant uh, is all about. So um, let, me, um, uh, let me tell you a little bit about the grant, and I'll turn it over to Assistant Secretary Uriskin to, to fill in the details. Um, we have, uh, we're at a, a point right now where uh, we have to make uh, the maximum use of every square inch of our harbor. Uh, that means that we have to make sure our harbor is, is amenable to all different kinds of vessels, of all, of every size and shape, uh, but that our port facilities run efficiently and that, can, that they can support uh, all the things that we're doing. Um, let me, uh, and, and that takes some planning. It takes some planning uh, to make sure that, um, that uh, we're taking advantage of the opportunities, that, we, uh, that our plans and what we do on land and at sea match up with those opportunities. The grant that uh, Secretary, uh, Assistant Secretary Erskine is announcing today will enable us to do that. It's a grant of some $200,000 that will match uh, a city contribution uh, to enable us to, uh, to get down to, to business. Uh, and good planning begets good business. Be good planning in the long run begets jobs. And that's really what we're here to do today. We have this asset. We have this great harbor. If we think hard about the future, not just two years from now, not just five years from now, but 20, 30, 50 years from now, we'll set ourselves up well so that our kids and our grandchildren can enjoy uh, the kinds of job opportunities that we think that can be created uh, here and, and in the long run create a, a community that will remain vibrant and, a, and a, uh, a great example as it has been in the past of what uh, uh, going, to, going to the sea well uh, 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 can do for a, a community. So. Uh, with all that, let me uh, let me introduce Matt Erskine, who uh, has a uh, he comes to uh, the Department of Commerce with uh, a, a great track record, both in management consulting as well as in um, uh, economic development on the, the public sector side. He ran uh, for years the economic development uh, entity for Greater uh, Washington. Uh, he has a huge success in management consulting in a number of fields. Uh, and he is uh, he's now heading uh, in an acting capacity and has for some time the Economic Development Administration, uh, whose job is, um, uh, is based on the recognition that the federal government 
does have an important uh, and constructive role to play in, uh, in helping communities leverage their assets, especially communities that have, um, that have not experienced economic fast, uh, rapid economic growth in some time. And we fit into that category. We realize that you know, we have had sluggish growth over a long period, that they we're trying now through good planning and good management to get out of uh, a period of decline. New Bedford is on its way up, and the, the kind of support that we're getting from the federal government uh, and the state government, which we'll talk about in a moment, uh, can really help us uh, drive long-term growth and create the kinds of jobs that we, uh, we think we can grow here. So with all that, Matt, we're so grateful for the support that you've uh, provided that, uh, and the support that ED, EDA has given over the years. We, uh, the last time EDA did a, uh, an event here was just a few months ago up in our industrial park. Uh, EDA had supported uh, some infrastructure work, a substantial infrastructure work to open up a large parcel that we're now marketing to major manufacturers. Uh, the planning grant today is really going to help us activate our port in ways that it will pay dividends in the long run. Matt, thank you so much. Thank you very much and good morning. Uh, Mayor Mitchell, thank you so much for uh, the kind introduction. And I want to say thanks to John for his leadership and his vision uh, and his championing of this, uh, this important community. And I also want to say thank you for uh, the interesting tour this morning, um, which was terrific. As a history buff, you know, learning, about, learning more about New Bedford's history, uh, important history in America, uh, as a dominating regional commercial fishing and textile hub, and of course, the exciting plans for future growth, building on New Bedford's proud history, and the strong competitive regional assets that you have here, uh, obviously including this community's proud, productive, and dedicated workforce. I'd also like to thank the elected representatives who are with us today and other distinguished guests, and especially our representatives from uh, Senator Markey's and Congressman Keating's office, Kate and Hugh, thank you very much for your presence today. And I'd also like to thank the New Bedford Economic Development Corporation uh, for hosting us today and for their great work. We enjoy very much our partnership. And before I begin, I want to recognize one important EDA team member, and that's Matthew Solchadelsky. Uh, I don't see Matthew, um, but he, there he is. Uh, Matthew, I think many of you know well, uh, out of our Philadelphia Regional Office, who represents uh, us here in Massachusetts. Uh, he also covers Vermont and New Jersey, but uh, I think we all know that clearly Massachusetts is his favorite. Um, no, Matthew, thank you for your work, for uh, your service, and for what you've done to bring uh, today's project to fruition. So today I'm excited to be here and to announce some good news that will help move forward, propel forward New Bedford's commercial fishing, fishing, cultural tourism, and offshore wind sectors and create new economic opportunity and jobs, as the mayor has said. Because planning is a critical component of any economic development project, I am pleased to officially announce that the U.S. Economic Development Administration as part of the U.S. Department of Commerce will be awarding a $200,000 grant to the New Bedford Economic Development Corporation to support the creation of advanced port development and redevelopment. Congratulations. <laughs> Specifically, the EDA investment will help develop a vision for a productive working waterfront, a waterfront that will help the city attract new types of business, manufacturing, and jobs associated with many sectors, but especially the wind power sector, and support the city's important commercial fishing and tourism sectors. The master plan will develop design principles for new construction and public spaces and give strong consideration to development adjacent to the New Bedford Marine Commerce Terminal, the NSTAR site, and the State Pier. The facts are clear. You've got an opportunity, and you are dedicated to making sure you capitalize on it. In 2010, the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center analyzed the capacity, quality, and potential of the existing port facilities to support manufacturing activities associated with the Cape Wind and Deepwater Wind projects. And New Bedford, due to its location along the northeastern seaboard and its hurricane-protected harbor, was chosen to be the host 
the host community for up to $100 million in improvements. For the new Bedford Marine Commerce Terminal, which as all of you know, a state-owned and operated site which will be the first of its kind in the U.S. to support wind turbine construction through the advanced engineered capacities to sustain mobile crane and storage loads. And a range of U.S., Asian, and European manufacturers will seek to capitalize on the Cape Wind and Deep Water Wind projects and facilities adjacent to the M NM NBMCT uh, will be in demand. And deals are already being made. Apparently in late December 2013, Cape Wind Associates entered into a contract with Siemens to buy giant turbines, an offshore transformer, and for maintenance services for its planned multi-billion dollar wind farm in Nantucket Sound. The city and MBEDC recognizes that a critical element to maximizing the economic benefits of the emerging offshore wind industry is a comprehensive land use plan for the working waterfront. The city has defined a 585 square acre planning area associated with the new working waterfront and the EDA support we celebrate today will support the urban renewal plan and the master plan for this area. Preliminary visioning exercises will outline the potential development over a 10 to 15 year time frame and the civic engagement will include key private and public sector stakeholders, district commercial property owners and operating businesses to involve the public in all phases of the planning process. Now the promotion of working waterfronts is a U.S. Department of Commerce and EDA effort. We're proud to have supported the National Working Waterfront Network so that municipalities, federal and state agencies, business and community development organizations can pool resources and best practices. And in addition, an EDA research and evaluation program grant to the Island Institute helped to develop the Sustainable Working Waterfronts Toolkit, which is a web-based information portal that contains a wealth of information about the historical and current use of waterfront space, the economic value of working waterfronts, and the legal policy and financing tools that can be used to preserve, enhance, and protect these valuable areas. If you'd like to learn more, you can go to eda.gov, our new website, which will provide more information. At EDA, everything that we do is designed to achieve four key objectives. Overall, it's about working in partnership with localities to support the locally generated and the locally owned plans. And within that, the four key objectives are leverage scarce resources, drive greater impact for job creation and economic growth, attain a better return on the taxpayer dollar, and make it as much as possible a seamless process for our stakeholders to apply for federal resources. Now, to be competitive for EDA assistance, you've got to demonstrate a commitment to building on regional assets, and you've got to have that strategic vision and all of the vital players having a seat at the table collaborating to ensure the community's success. At the core of our work is the commitment to this collaboration, and we work with communities to address economic issues and opportunities, and that is what we have done here and will continue to do in New Bedford. And as the mayor said, vitally important showing the commitment of this region. This EDA co-investment is being matched by the NBEDC, representing solid buy-in by this community. So as the federal government continues to work with New Bedford and local communities across the country, we will rebuild our economy and return to full employment. And with that in mind, I want to leave you with this challenge. I challenge New Bedford to make this EDA-supported project such a success that in the months and years ahead, we can and will point to it as a shining example of the kind of collaboration and partnership that will serve as a model for communities all across the country. The kind of example that they can look to as they rebuild, revitalize, strengthen, and enhance their communities and get people working again. Because helping communities and getting people working again is our goal. And there's nothing more important than that right now to me, to our Secretary, Penny Pritzker, to President Obama and to our fellow Americans still looking for a way in and a way up in this economy. So again, I congratulate you for forging the partnerships needed and will continue to be needed to bring this project to even more success. I encourage you to keep up the good work. Thank you for having me in New Bedford. It's been an honor to be with you. Thank you very much.
Great job, Matt, and, uh, and thank you again for the support. Um, uh, we are, by the way, pleased that your timing was good this morning. Matt got in his run down to the south end, got the gander at uh, the beaches, and uh, took it all in just before the, uh, the deluge. So, uh, and, and we will, uh, by the way, mark my word, we will take you up on that challenge. And New Bedford, uh, we here in New Bedford take pride in our ability to be uh, an example for other cities, and that's exactly the business we're going to make it happen here. Before I call up, uh, the, uh, the elected officials uh, for their remarks. Let me, uh, let me call up uh, Derek Santos, uh, the director of the uh, Economic Development Council of Greater New Bedford. Uh, Derek uh, was the, the point person on this grant, worked very closely with Matt Morrissey, our wind energy director, as well as uh, our port director, Jeff Steve. Jeff's not here today. Uh, Matt is our deputy port director. Uh, Ed Washburn is, uh, is here with us in support, but this is a, an all-hands effort uh, that uh, Derek has been uh, running point on, and uh, just ask Derek to come up and offer a few remarks about the grant and what happens next. Derek. Well, the first thing is on behalf of the board of the MBDC and all the members and staff of the MBDC, we want to offer a big thank you to the secretary um, and the staff of Philadelphia for this project, uh, to the, the opportunity to fund this work. If it's infrastructure such we had at Flattery Drive, planning here, or even funding for our small business loans, the EDA has been a constant partner with the MBDC, and we look forward to having that continue. The, uh, uh, there's a, a couple of phrases that we use in our office all the time. One is grab an oar, and the other one is plan for success. So this project amplifies both of those two statements where everyone is going to have to come to the table as we pull this project together. This is one of the largest planning projects that we've worked on in, in our time at the EDC, both in terms of complexity and in terms of physical area, area. So our partnership with the HDC and the City Planning Office, the Workforce Investment Board, and everyone else is going to have to come to the table on the public side to match the efforts and energy of, of our partners in the private side as we pull together the stakeholder group. That'll be sort of the first step once we get going to map out the rest of the planning effort going forward. It'll be no different than planning projects that we've done in the Upper Harbor or in the downtown where we've had a large degree of civic engagement, a good amount of analysis that can lead to a strategy that makes sense for growth. We've seen that happen in the Upper Harbor with the constant mill redevelopment that's going on there now. I see Quentin Ricciardi here for our latest ribbon cutting just a couple of months ago, and as well as projects going on downtown. Those planning efforts lead to those type of development projects, and those type of development projects lead to construction jobs, they lead to full-time jobs, they lead to expansion of the commercial tax base. That's the entire reason why the EDC sees planning and good analysis as such a strong tool for economic development. We're excited to get going. Ed Washburn and myself were talking about this earlier today. We're just ready to uh, you know, roll up the sleeves, um, get the process going, and, uh, and can't wait for the next steps. So thank you, man. Thanks, Charlie. Thank you, Derek. Um, me, uh, before I introduce uh, the elected officials, I just want to acknowledge uh, Jojo Fort's former city councilor, but uh, 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 one of the officers in uh, the local, our local uh, International Longshoremen's Association. Jojo, thanks for being here today. The, the ILA uh, has been uh, 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 enjoying a resurgence because of the uh, growth of the, uh, the cargo uh, industry here in New Bedford, and we look forward to more successes in the years to come, in part because of the planning work that this uh, grant will allow us to do. Um, so with all that, let me, uh, let me first call up uh, Representative Tony Cabral. We're in Tony's district right now. Tony has been an enormous supporter of waterfront development uh, right from the start of his time in the State House uh, and before. Uh, Tony recognizes that uh, the kinds of uh, the kind of planning that we're talking about today and the infrastructure investment that the state is making with, with his support uh, lead to job creation. Uh, it makes us more competitive, and Tony uh, has been a, an advocate and a force a champion of that approach uh, all along. And uh, uh, Tony, we appreciate your support, connection with this grant, the planning effort associated with it. I just ask you to come up and say a few words. Thank you, Mayor, and uh, welcome, uh, Deputy Assistant, Se uh, Assistant Secretary, to New Bedford. And uh, we really are appreciative that EDA recognizes the effort that's going on in New Bedford and came today with a check. We like that. Uh, $200,000, it is absolutely crucial. Planning, as the Mayor said, and the, 
Deputy Assistant uh, Secretary said, planning is very important. We are here on one of the most important assets that New Bedford has, has defined the history of New Bedford for, uh, for now, not only the case, but centuries, actually. Um, and uh, uh, the planning around of what's going on in the waterfront is extremely important. We appreciate that the federal government is going to be a partner with us, and we, the EDC and, and uh, the Wind um, Center as well. The state has been a very important and forceful partner over the last several years uh, in, in the city. Uh, we are investing $100 million, as you said, Mr. Secretary, uh, in South Terminal because we believe New Bedford is that place that is in the right place at the right time in order for us to, to move forward around uh, not only offshore, uh, offshore uh, wind, but also uh, making sure that our fishing industry is strong and continues uh, to push forward so we be, remain the number one seaport uh, in the nation. That's, to us, that planning goes hand in hand, making sure that all those things happen. So once again, Thank you very much, and I hope that this is not the first and the last partnership with you. Thank you. All right, let me, um, let me ask uh, Paul Schmidt, uh, who uh, uh, graciously joined us for the boat ride. Uh, before, I was in the right uh, place at the, the right, right time. time. Exactly. Uh, uh, Paul is, uh, uh, has been a huge support of what we're trying to do to, to, to grow jobs in the city. And uh, Paul, we're pleased that you're here today. And uh, even pleased, uh, pleased even more that you went out in the boat today. Thank you very much, Mayor. And I appreciate being invited along. I do recall, though, that you said you only had a knife, enough life preservers for six of you. And I was the seventh, so I was on my own. But we made it back. It's OK. Yeah, you're a team player. <laughs> yeah, we'll see about that. <laughs> no, absolutely. Uh, I think the under uh, secretary had an opportunity to uh, see the harbor and the many parts of the harbor. Uh, the commercial fishing fleet, uh, which is a which is a varied. You saw a varied fleet, a varied undertaking. You saw the scalloping ships. You saw the ground fish. You saw a boat offloading herring. You saw uh, some lobster uh, ships. You also had an opportunity to see part of the, recrea the recreational part of the harbor. And of course, finally, we went down to the South Terminal, uh, where, as my colleague, uh, Chairman Kerbal, pointed out, the state is investing $100 million uh, to create opportunities uh, for uh, uh, the region. So uh, as the mayor said, your, uh, uh, the federal government's check will be put to good use here, uh, planning how to create, keep creating this very complex uh, maritime uh, opportunity. We thank you for being here. And uh, Mayor Mitchell, as uh, Tony just said, uh, you'll always continue to have the uh, support of the state delegation as well. Thank you. Thanks very Thank much. You, Thank you. And again, let me just uh, echo uh, Assistant Secretary uh, Erskine's um, uh, thanks to um, our congressional delegation, uh, uh, to Senators uh, Markey and Warren, as well as to Congressman Keating. Um, Hugh Dunn and uh, Kate Matchett are, are here uh, representing their offices, and we appreciate, uh, appreciate the support uh, that uh, our uh, representatives in Congress have given this project and their support for EDA and the difference it can make in cities like this. I wanted to, uh, 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 before I, I, I announce the next speaker uh, and the last speaker, uh, let me just uh, thank uh, Buddy Andrade here from old, the Old Bedford uh, Village. Uh, who has been, uh, probably more than anybody else, uh, a, a champion of job growth on the harbor. Um, and more than, as, as much as anybody, Buddy understands that uh, this kind of investment and in planning and infrastructure is, uh, is, opens up the pathway to job creation. So I appreciate support as always, Buddy. Let me, uh, uh, let me call up uh, Jim Oliveira from uh, City Council from Ward 1. Uh, who uh, wears the economic development hat on the city council. He uh, 
Uh, he wears more than one hat, though. He's also uh, uh, he works for the Workforce Investment Board and understands that uh, the, the connection between infrastructure investment and planning and workforce development, how they are all, um, they are all part of a three-legged stool that leads to, uh, to economic growth. And Jim, uh, we appreciate the support here today and I'd ask you to say a couple of words on behalf of the council. Save this. They, they saved me for last because I'm the short guy, so I have to get behind the mic here. You got the best hand, though. <laughs> uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Secretary Irvin uh, Erskine rather for uh, uh, bringing this grant to New Bedford. Uh, we were talking earlier with uh, Matt Morrissey, and, and EDA holds the keys. That, and, and I say that literally because it opens the door for opportunity. Uh, I had the opportunity many years ago to work with EDA as Economic Development Director here in the city, and uh, those were the people that I sought to uh, build the best relationships with over time because they, they really brought a lot of support to the city of New Bedford. I want to share with you that this waterfront, since, since I grew up, has been transformed tenfold over the years. I can remember this being my playground about 45 years ago riding my bike through here and, and uh, you know, talking to the fishermen on the, on the side of the wharf and all of those different things. Well, it's changed dramatically. And that's through hard work of, these, uh, of a number of folks over the years that are dedicated to the city of New Bedford and see the connection of New Bedford to the sea. It's very, very important that we continue to understand that. We're connected to the sea and we will be connected to the sea and that's what will be our legacy. So that said, as, as the Employment Opportunity Chair for the, uh, for the City Council, I'm sure we'll be participating in this particular effort. As a counselor, uh, when uh, we do see an opportunity to support the waterfront, I can tell you that in many cases that you get 100% support from, from our City Council. We're partners with the administration and we'll continue to be partners and uh, look forward to participating in this grant as we go forward. And I want to make one final point, too. Uh, in terms of workforce development, uh, the mayor mentioned that uh, I also work for the Workforce Investment Board. I want to thank Len Corriarty for the, the, the great leadership that he's provided over the years here. And, and uh, help you all understand that he's not going away, he's just uh, moving into an, an another spot, and uh, I look forward to working with him in the future. Uh, he's going to be part of this, of this plan as well, I'm sure. So thank you, and we look forward to uh, the events that will transpire in the future. Thanks, Jim. All right, thank you, Jim. Anybody have any questions? Do you have a timeline for when this planning phase is? Derek, can you speak to that? Yeah, it's an 18-month uh, process from beginning um, uh, to end. That process starts once we uh, retain a consultant to, to begin going forward. So the first process is going through an RFP to RFP process, request for proposals to retain a professional consultant. Once we have them going, it's an 18-month plan. And the max is an additional $300,000. Was that my understanding? The, the grant from the EDA is $200,000. The total project value is $400,000. The city's uh, uh, cash match from, from the uh, city and city council, as Jim pointed out, is roughly $132,000. The EDA was, uh, because the EDC is putting so much staff time into the project, allowed somewhere in the neighborhood of $65,000 of in-kind staff time um, to, be, to count towards that match. And you mentioned jobs. Let's get specific. What type of jobs are we talking about? Mission jobs, construction jobs? All of them. Yeah, all, all of them. So, um, so you know, if you take a drive up and down our waterfront, you'll see a full range of, uh, of jobs associated with our maritime industry. So they include uh, construction jobs, but they include fishing jobs, and jobs in, uh, in processing plants, um, include jobs on terminals, people driving forklifts, welders, um, engineers. I mean, it runs the gamut. And then all the services that support, all the indirect uh, job growth that comes with that. So it's, you know, the lawyers and the accountants and the restaurant owners and so forth. There's a great spillover effect. I mean, our, 
waterfront is a is a big economic engine, and what we're trying to do is uh, is to give it a turbo boost through this uh, through through good planning and, and good investment. Do you have an estimate about how many jobs are going to be program? Well, I mean, any kind of jo job predict jobs prediction would be speculative, but this is the way that communities grow. They identify assets. They do good planning around those assets, planning that is geared toward figuring out how uh, uh, investment might be attracted by, by enhancing those assets and how they're marketed, uh, making sure that there's a workforce ready to support that growth, uh, and, then, uh, and then putting it all in place and making additional investments to, to, to support those efforts. I mean, that's how it's done. It's not rocket science, but it, it requires uh, determination and it requires the kind of collaboration that you're hearing about today. Do you think there will be things that are happening on the waterfront now that after this planning process may not be happening here? No, I want to see, as I've said a number of times uh, over the last few months, I want to see more of everything. It is, uh, uh, all, uh, it is an all of the above strategy. That's, that's the approach. Uh, I believe that as, uh, in particular when it comes to commercial fishing, um, which is probably what you're getting at, uh, New Bed fishing is here to stay in New Bedford. Uh, as we're seeing some ports around the Northeast in particular struggle uh, to continue um, fishing activity because of the decline in fishing stocks and regulations, a lot of that activity is gravitating toward New Bedford. We're getting now, Jim, uh, boats landing fish here that have, that have home ported in, in Maine and as far south as North Carolina. We've had processors in the last few years who have pulled up their tent pegs in other places and have come here. So there's, there's a certain gravitational pull uh, of this port uh, because we've, we've kept things going in ways that other ports haven't. Uh, I want to see more of that, but I also think through good planning, we can, uh, we can grow some of these other industries. There sh we should be getting more cargo into our port, and we can if we have the right facilities. We've got, a, we've got great support from the International Longman's Association. They're ready to, uh, to do more work. Um, so the, the, the workforce capacity is already in place. Offshore wind holds tremendous potential because of our geographic proximity to the enormous wind resource that lies just south of Martha's Vineyard. We've got this great terminal that's being constructed right now. We've got all the other infrastructure in place. So there's tremendous potential, but we've got to think through well in collaboration with, uh, with the business community, uh, other uh, levels of government, as well as organized labor, how we pull it all together. And that's what this planning exercise is about. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you most of all to the EDA for their support. Thanks. Sir.